Good morning, Bard Sound and Nelson County, and welcome to Bradford and Brooks. Jim Brooks and Margie Bradford are with you this morning on this kind of drizzly, rainy uh, Wednesday morning in beautiful downtown Bardstown. Uh, it, uh, uh, it, it, I, I kind of miss our sun, sunshine we had, yeah. Margie. Yeah, they keep teasing us. <laughs> Mother Nature is a tease. Well, you know. Uh, uh, you know, we're not even to April showers yet. We're uh, well, time. it's working on it. <laughs> well, I tell you, our uh, daffodils have come up all over the place on our, on uh, out at our house. Well, so. the only thing that's come up in my yard is moles. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I'd like to borrow some of your daffodils. <laughs> well, you know, the, the interesting thing about daffodils to me is, especially if you're riding through the country, you can see mm -hmm. you can see where fence lines used to be. You know, where a house has been long gone, but you know, every year the daffodils will come up, and you'll kind of mm -hmm. see like the front of the house or the fence row or something. Anyway, <laughs> all right. Uh, well, the. Bradford and Brooks today, we have two very special guests with us that represent Nelson County Ford. And if you're not familiar with uh, the name of the uh, name of that group, um, it, uh, it's been involved with the, uh, well, I'm trying to describe you, just <laughs> how to just, um, actually a group of concerned parents who have uh, been unhappy with um, um, health the uh, with the, some of the boards of education, the Nelson County <coughs> Board of Education specifically, some of the actions that uh, that they've taken in in uh, since January 2023. I guess is that is that a fair statement, Jessica? Yeah, that's a fair statement. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, they're with us today to talk about. Well, we have lots to talk about, <laughs> and as I, as I told Jessica before the show, we could talk about. Uh, Education and school board issues for three hours today, if we if we had the time. But we won't. Uh, thankfully, our listeners won't have to listen to me drone on for for three hours. <clears throat> but we will uh, talk to our guest uh, Jessica Hogue, and I'm sorry I didn't write you. <laughs> Jamie Miracle. Jamie Miracle. That's right. <clears throat> well, I knew Miracle, but I didn't, <laughs> couldn't remember. I think the last time I heard your name, you were about <laughs> yay tall, Jamie. <clears throat> the uh, anyway. Um, and to talk about NC Forward and, and just uh, uh, there's been a lot of activity on the NC Forward Facebook page mm -hmm. and a lot of information and um, anyway it, it's uh, uh, it's th things are kind of in a, in a tremendous state of flux um, and you know I mean we're not sure where things are going or how it's going to go and I think uh, um, anyway but, but first uh, let's talk a little about NC Forward and what what um, uh, what prompted you all to get together, and uh, uh, and I know that you all uh, filed a complaint in, in uh, circuit court, mm -hmm. and tell us a little bit about about what uh, what the goal of the group has been, and uh, uh, what you uh, what you, what you're trying to get done. Okay, so um, <clears throat> as you said, we have been watching um, really since. April of 2021 when mm -hmm. a um, the talks of we need a new district facility plan kind of started mm -hmm. um, after the elections and when the new board members took um, their off or their seats in January of 2023 we quickly saw where this was actually headed and we knew that it was not going to be in the best interest of all students in Nelson County uh, so um, we were, I think we were established in April or May of 2023. And um, to be very clear and transparent, <laughs> NC Forward is a group. Um, we are a nonprofit organization and we are made up of four board members. Mm -hmm. um, so a lot of people want to say, uh, well, NC Forward's doing this. and. That's not necessarily true because NC Forward is made up of four people. Mm -hmm. Myself, Jamie, <clears throat> uh, Donald Dye, and Kathleen Llewellyn. Those are the four board members. Um, we did create a NC Forward community page on Facebook, and that is the intent of that was um, a community page for people who were just kind of getting to know what was going on to be able to ask questions and have open discussions. Mm -hmm. um, unfortunately, <laughs> um, 
our media team are they're comprised of volunteers. We can't be on Facebook 24/7 <laughs> monitoring comments. Um, so <coughs> we we try our best, um, but. I want to be very clear that NC Forward is is the the nonprofit, and we did create NC Forward Community um, for that purpose, mm -hmm. um, for that open discussion, and and we have group roles, and and sometimes people follow them, and sometimes they don't. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that was uh, the purpose of creating NC Forward. Um, we have four main pillars: equity, access, opportunity, and accountability. Mm -hmm. And it seems for the past year, we have had to really focus on accountability. And specifically with, uh, with, with the, the Board of Education? Yes. Uh, it may, uh, your group may consist of four members, but you have a lot of support in the community, I, I, I would assume, from the people who are showing up at the board meetings? Yes. I would think. I mean, I yes. would think. I would think that they're supporting what um, what we are fighting for, which is what I just stated: equal mm -hmm. access, mm -hmm. opportunities, and accountability. Right. There's a large part of the county that align with our mission and our vision and our pillars. And um, like Jessica mentioned, the the community page gives them a way mm -hmm. to voice that. Mm -hmm. um, and as you mentioned, right, there's a lot going on right now, and emotions are mm -hmm. high, right? Um, and it is very obvious, and you can see it. Would right. it be would it be fair to say that you you as a group are supporting the vision of the uh, plans which were put forth by the superintendent uh, after the recommendations that came from the group? From the local planning. From the local, from the local planning, planning. The local planning. Absolutely. Absolutely. I think yes. everyone, um, the f which we're comprised of <laughs> two of the four, um, we do support the, the current district facility plan. Um, we realize that um, some people might question that process but it's a very lengthy process to create a right. facility plan mm -hmm. and every every school district has to do that Absolutely. Right. Uh, that, there's yeah. no um, yeah. there's no cutting corners and, no and corners were not cut with this no process. absolutely yeah. not. I went to a lot of those meetings and there was a lot of thoughtful discussion about the best way to move forward and options that were thoroughly discussed and examined yeah. Uh, it was a, a very painstakingly done well it, uh, uh, process, um, and of course people had their their uh, you know an opportunity to to weigh in on it with each each of the uh, planning committee meetings. Um, the uh, and I will tell you, just as an observer and a journalist, um, there were tre there was tremendous concern about the uh, plan that they. Uh, that the uh, planning committee pushed forward there was because of it was such an unknown and, and different and change is hard you know and it uh, but I have seen just from my perspective how the community evolved to accept and appreciate uh, the wisdom and the, the planning of uh, the community campus uh, idea mm -hmm. and and it was amazing to me to see just that sh and it took a while but there was a shift in support from being concerned about you know having uh, middle schoolers near a uh, you know a, a near near a high near high school kids, and and I remember comments about well what are we going to do with all the pregnant sixth graders we have you know um, and I'm like well I don't know Bardstown High isn't overrun with pregnant sixth graders no they're not they are we, yeah, we've done that. We've done that from the very beginning. <laughs> that's right. That's right. All on one campus. Right. And but I know. I know they're different size. Yeah. Size schools, et cetera. But, uh, but anyway, the uh, uh, the majority of the community seemed to come forward and accept it as uh, as a, the best alternative. Especially, you know, the uh, the the four pillars that you all want. I mean, and, and let's make it clear. At least from my perspective, again, you all can uh, weigh in as well. The uh, uh, Boston and New Haven have kind of been uh, their middle schoolers have kind of been the on the bottom of the equity mm -hmm. and uh, accessibility and uh, the, the 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 list. Uh, poor New Haven has just kind of been the uh, forgotten child of the family for so long, and I, and I think you know, and and it's true that the kids there deserve 
uh, the same opportunity that the middle schoolers have at the other schools. I think it's very important for people, because a lot of people will ask that, well, why do they have to move New Haven and Boston middle mm -hmm. schoolers? And um, <coughs> so if you look at our county of, I think it's about 4,700 is the estimated enrollment. Mm -hmm. um, that is four, we have four middle schools. Yeah. And two of them are a K through eight. Those kids are not getting the same opportunities that are happening over at OKH. And mm -hmm. we could easily argue that Bloomfield Middle is not getting the mm -hmm. same opportunities that OKH has created. Right. Right. Um, and shoving all of those kids into OKH doesn't necessarily mean that they all of a sudden have the same opportunities that the kids this year had. Mm -hmm. um, because there's going to have to be a shift to accommodate that many kids. I think it's very important that people realize a county our size of, again, 4,700 students, it does not warrant four mm -hmm. middle schools. So, so, so we, we, that focus still needs to be there, regardless of what happens um, mm -hmm. moving forward those problems are still going to exist. Right, and, and it was amazing to me to watch the, the meeting where um, a board member brought up, um, made a motion to move the middle schoolers from Boston to New Haven. And this was done and approved without any discussion, uh, without any, but real, no real board discussion, and uh, no discussion or input from parents. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's just, you know, I have covered school boards for 30 years, and I think I, I don't remember ever seeing such a major change mm -hmm. uh, approved by a board without thorough discussion and communication with All parents. Right. Well, as a school board member, I can tell you for 34 years, well, that's just not the way it is done because it's, it's patently unfair to the process mm -hmm. and to the, to, uh, um, the community. I, I mean, think that it's... Um, it really shows um, almost a lack of com compassion mm -hmm. from board members to do something that drastic without any community input, um, to not even talk to the parents of New Haven and Boston kids. Um, that's It's very disheartening. Well, you know, and I've tried to put myself in the shoes of the of the board members because, and I think they are feeling like every meeting they're under siege and they're criticized. And that's over the last year plus, that's kind of been how it's gone in the public comment section part of the meetings. And so, I, you know, I mean, and we've seen the uh, board chair last year, um, you know, move to limit public input. Yep. And um, and we see some games being played that I've observed. Um, uh, people signing up to speak and then um, uh, the order changing, uh, changing yeah. uh, to favor um, to, to uh, you know to and, and th uh, obviously to to put you know critics uh, so far down the list they won't have a time uh, time to speak but but anyway I uh, think really quick I just want to throw my two cents in there about guest co limiting guest comments has never been done before right um, when this <coughs> DFP and LPC process was going on guest comments were never limited mm -hmm. and um, I think that if if you're worried about guest comments lasting two hours it's probably time to reflect that you as a board member might not be making the right decisions and not listening to the community. Right, right. And I would, I would say a, a lot of what we're seeing right now as far as emotions and the way people are um, could have been prevented a long time ago had those open dialogues happened from and the get-go. Not any secret not back, back room deals um, that, that we're seeing play out right now right in front of our faces. Mm -hmm. Well, I think that, uh, and of course, I'm just speculating. Um, I think the relationship between the community and the members of the board would have been, would have been better served if that had been the case too. Yes. There wouldn't be the animosity, you know, and because, uh, you know, I mean, we've heard the board members talk about that they uh, they don't even, or they don't look or don't like to look at emails because there there many of them are so negative, you know, and. Um, and we've had one board member's tires cut at a board meeting. I mean, there's been, you know, and, and at the, I noticed at the, um, 
at the last uh, uh, board meeting, there were there was a heavy presence of law enforcement mm -hmm. there. Um, but but anyway, um, and I I would hope that moving forward at some point there's a, ch a cooling off, you know, kind of a reset. Um, but I know that you know that's going to take time. Mm -hmm. um, I mean we've. Um, you know the uh, and and we're still waiting for the other shoe to drop, as far as if the uh, the education commissioner's uh, decision on um, the um, resolution to uh, terminate uh, the superintendent or not. Mm -hmm. We don't know where that's at. Yeah. But uh, but anyway, uh, NC Forward. Uh, now you all were involved in a uh, in legal action, and what uh, what was the basis for for what you all went to court for? Well, number one, starting out, um, NC Ford, the board members, we believe that the district facility plan is a legal document at mm -hmm. this point. It's been approved. Um, by law, we believe that it should be followed. It mm -hmm. shall be followed. Um, if our school board doesn't like the district facility plan, there are guidelines and re regulations to go about changing it the proper way. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a school board that has not received any training from the Kentucky Department of Education on district facility planning process, mm -hmm. yet they continue to make decisions that have a huge impact on our children, our students, our mm -hmm. school system. So again, if the school board doesn't like the DFP, they need to go about it, changing it the correct way. We can't pick and choose the pieces that we want from it. We need right. to either reconvene the LPC and do it the correct way. That, that's where we stand. That's, yeah. And I think, um, you know, Jamie and I, we, we, talk, we talk a lot. Um, but one thing that the, the lack of Kate training from the Kentucky Department of Education on the DFP planning, facilities training, um, that keeps getting uh, pushed back, keeps getting right. canceled. Um, I don't know why, because if board members fully believe that, whether it be one high, if they believe one high school is the best course of action for this district, why are they not going through the proper channels and the proper procedures to make that happen? Mm -hmm. um, but Jamie and I were just talking too, like, have you know going through that training will help them realize that there's a lot more questions than just putting 1500 kids back at nelson county high school and saying right. well, it, it's going to work it'll be <clears> fine <throat> right you have to look at infrastructure you have to look at traffic plans you have to look at even well, the sewer system, the sewer I mean, system. I mean, can that all, of that all of that and those are questions that currently are not being asked so people need to be concerned that dra these drastic decisions are, are being made by people that have not been properly trained. Right, and it concerns me that they've canceled or, or delayed uh, the, mm -hmm. this training because it, uh, and, and you know, and I, I th I'm looking ahead and I'm thinking, well, you know, uh, the next superintendent, one of the first things that they really need to do is to revisit the district facilities plan and, and bring together another local planning committee mm -hmm. and there's specific very specific ways to do that mm -hmm. and I know that uh, Wes Bradley followed the law you know the the procedures 100% there um, but you know y there's really no way to game the system if you if you form a, an LPC correctly yeah. you know I mean you you know the superintendent is doesn't cherry pick or hand pick the members of that board no, um, no. And, and can't legally because KDE sets those mm -hmm. standards, yeah. and you follow those standards of mm -hmm. how it's picked. Mm -hmm. And so, <laughs> you know, selected. and you really don't know what what the results will be of a of a new of a reform planning committee. Yeah, right. You know, but anyway, we'll, we will see because that's uh, the next superintendent will have uh, his hands his or her hands full. Mm -hmm. uh, oh yes. With yes, the uh, and, and you know, and I, I have privately wondered uh, uh, who would. Uh, who would want to step into this into into the way things are but uh, um, you know I, I'm sure um, you know again uh, we're all hoping for the best mm -hmm. you know but uh, now you, you all uh, like say went to court um, and what were the uh, what, what were the basic issues that you all were seeking d in district so court? there was four motions <coughs> um, the day of the court of our last uh, hearing hearing and um, 
I believe the first one. The first one uh, was the motion, the motion, excuse me, over the opening open meetings violation, um, where we asked, basically what we were asking for did not meet the standard for the open meetings violation. Yes, so the, the, they kept arguing that it sounds like you're trying to get an injunction yeah. and, and we're not gonna do that. Right. So I wanna make it very clear that the judge denied the need for an injunction on that motion. Mm -hmm. um, that doesn't mean that the board members did not violate Open Meetings Act, nor did he say that they didn't violate. So, okay. so he didn't so really rule still, on that question. Right. He right. Did, the ruling was on... The ruling was on that this in, we injunction. Can't have an injunction. We can't have an injunction. Right. right. What, ha, have you appealed this to the Attorney General's office? No. Uh, the, uh, the open, uh, as a violation of the Open Meetings Law? No, because I think we are still waiting for discovery. other discovery to come come forth. Right. And that discovery would be emails and text messages on mm -hmm. board members' personal accounts and personal phones. Mm -hmm. um, we haven't had access to that. We can't yet. That It is in our attorney's hand. He is going through that. Mm -hmm. So um, at this point, what we're, you know, what our goal, not our goal, but what we hope to find is evidence that the Open mm -hmm. Meetings Act has been violated. Mm -hmm. And, um, yes. Well, one of the, uh, as somebody who's filed my share of open meetings and open records <coughs> documents, um, you know, and, and I love the transparency that, that the, the uh, KRS provides. Right. Uh, however, the one thing that it, it's always lacked, open meetings and open records law, is teeth. You know, there's no real penalty if you, other than, you know, and as a journalist, I, because there's no, you know, there's no real teeth to it. You know, they, the attorney general will rule if, if they did violate open meetings or open records. And, uh, and you have an opportunity, you could go to circuit court and uh and and, tr and uh, file a complaint there but well it, you know. it it has consequences for a school board member i can tell you okay it, does. it should yes. um yeah. and there's <coughs> plenty of proof that okay. board members are not using their board a board appointed email address and that other email addresses have been used to do to conduct board um, business which is Mark, it's against the law. And that's not how it's supposed to be done, no, correct? No, it's against the law. Well, I will tell you some municipal governments that I've covered. Uh, this this same question has come up and that uh, they they did the their municipality business on their private phone and their private email. And then there was open records request. And then th they were... The, I can just remember they were dumbfounded. You mean I've got to go through my personal email account and, and mm -hmm. extract all of the, the you know, city or county business uh, documents? And then they're like, that's it. That's what you have to do. That's and that's you should use your <clears throat> exactly. government appointed email, exactly. email address. Exactly. So, um, and, and I think the courts would support that, too, that, mm -hmm. that um, that's fully discoverable information no matter oh, yeah. what, the, what it is. Now, uh, of course, you know, you know, you don't have access to their personal email, and you're not looking for that. No. You just want the uh, the board things related to the Correct. to uh, the board yes. business. And I think, you know, any court in the land would back that up. I think because that's that's how it should be done, and and that's exactly why you get official email accounts and official uh, cell phone. Mm -hmm. You know, just to keep the two separate. Yeah. Yeah, in our eyes, as far as going back to one of our pillars of accountability, is if you're doing what's right, good, and just for the students of Nelson County, we don't need to be conduct conducting business on our personal phones. We should be able to use our board email address to conduct that business mm -hmm. and not have anything to worry about. Um, so that goes back to why we are all here <laughs> today. <laughs> all right, now you said there were, there were four motions that in court that day, is that right? Yes. What were the other ones related to? The second one was um, about an open records request, um, and it was for, e <clears throat> I think it was emails and text messages sent before or after the December board meeting. Um, no ruling has been issued by the judge. He is still reviewing that. Mm -hmm. um, and the third was... The third was 
like the year's worth of emails and text messages? Yes, the third, that was where we spent a lot of our time discussing yeah. um, where they wanted, they're like, we have the documents that have been requested by NC Forward's attorney, but we want to make sure that um, we want it to be attorney's eyes only right now. And so there's um, there's a protect essentially a protective order on mm -hmm. those documents okay um and then the fourth and final one is really the original um, the dfp that you have to fund the dfp or go about changing it changing it um th but this just sitting still and um doing what i would call personal um agendas mm -hmm. that's that's not how we conduct business and that's not what's best for all of our students and i think that um, board members have lost that fo that focus. Mm -hmm. uh, well, <laughs> when um, and I remember back in January 2023, one of the first votes with the new board members was, uh, and it was approval, I think, of either construction documents or going forward with bonds. Mm -hmm. um, and I remember our, our board chair, Amanda Deaton, said, "Well." Um, I made it clear where I stood on all of this, you know, when she was campaigning. Mm -hmm. And uh, she said, so if you voted for me, you didn't vote for the status quo. But uh, I will contend that um, the work to not follow the DFP have condem not condemned, but have stuck our kids with the status quo. Yeah. You know, nothing's getting better. I, exactly. I mm -hmm. agree with that, too. Um, if <coughs> the people who ran for those seats, if... I, I would love to hear their plan. What ideas do they have um, for facilities? And okay, if it's one high school, it's going to take more than just voting it through at a board meeting, um, which again, KDE says you can't do if you're wanting to access those restricted funds. Right. Um, so, so let's let's have those, those conversations. But to do that, you have to have open dialogue with everyone in the county, mm -hmm. not just the ones that agree with you. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. Well, we need to take a break, get some some commercials out of the way. You're listening to Bradford and Brooks, and, and Margie and I and our special guest, Jamie Miracle and uh, Jessica Hogue. We'll be back with you. Uh, they're from NC Forward, by the way. We'll be back in just a few minutes. Stay tuned. All right, you're back with Bradford and Brooks. Jim Brooks and Margie Bradford will be with you till the top of the hour, along with our special studio guest, Jamie Miracle, and Jessica Hogue with NC Forward. Uh, before we go back to our guest, I just want a, a little editorial comment that, uh, um, you know, something that hasn't been mentioned publicly in the meetings uh, uh, since, and this happened actually in the first part of 2023, uh, the actions that the board took to vote down moving forward with community campus after all the work that had been done uh, that cost our school district the county school district uh, at least two million dollars um, and there's been no apology or mention of it by the members of the board who voted against it and i think that and and what's more important to realize is this money came from the general fund that also funds our kids education and uh, it wasn't specialized money set aside for uh, construction this was money they weren't planning to have to spend um, for violating contracts etc um, and I know that um, uh, I saw one document was well over like a million three and I think I've heard the totals higher than that mm -hmm. and I think that uh, uh, as a board member, I don't think you're supposed to take actions that that, that deplete the uh, the school's uh, budget and takes education money off the table from uh, the four thousand plus kids enrolled in Nelson County Schools. Anyway, that's and my that in, and that includes a board member who had voted for it before. Yeah, <laughs> voted for it before voting against it. Right. That's right. All right. Anyway, just my editorial comment, um, and we'll get back with our guest, uh, Jamie and uh, Jessica. All right. Let's see. What were we talking about? Nelson <laughs> <laughs> County Board of Education. Um, well, guys, the um, you've got a hearing in, in later this. Is it this month? It's next, next Friday. No, that's right. Um, and will this be kind of an update on on the ongoing? complaints that you all have yes, yes. Yeah. and and we as we were talking in the interim uh, about how how these 
uh, actions of the board have impacted uh, you all directly with your children? Yeah, I really got involved more with this. I will, I will say October 22, I really mm -hmm. started paying attention um, to what was going on because I could see what was probably going to happen in the, in the election. I'm the parent of two middle schoolers. Um, I've got, well, one will be going to high school next year. But my child's education has been directly impacted by what the, the decision-making process of the school board. My son should be starting seventh grade in August 2024 at a brand new state-of-the-art middle school on Thomas Nelson's campus. Mm -hmm. New Haven, Boston middle schoolers should be starting school August 2024 in a brand new state-of-the-art facility uh, where we can come together three years sooner to build a community mm -hmm. with our neighbors mm -hmm. um, and build that school culture and school community along with Thomas Nelson High School. Um, and it's something that when I sent my child, I wanted my kids to go to Bloomfield. I grew up, well, I was one of the second groups of kids to go from Cox's Creek to Bloomfield. Mm -hmm. My father was on the school board then that made that decision. Um, it was the, pro and I think if he were here today, he would say that was the best decision at the time for Cox's mm -hmm. Creek. Absolutely. That was 30 something years ago. Things mm -hmm. have changed. It's time to move on. And I didn't realize, I, Bloomfield has been great for my kids. Mm -hmm. um, my kids have loved their teachers. They've learned a lot. Um, but I, I quickly noticed that there were there was an equity issue even with Bloomfield compared mm -hmm. to what OKH offers. Um, my daughter very early on started talking about, well, I've met these friends now, and we're going to split again. Mm -hmm. So Cox's Creek kids split between OKH uh, and Bloomfield, even though they're districted to go to OKH. A lot of our kids live much closer to OKH. Mm -hmm. They make that decision that's best for their families. Um, and then, and then they again? split again from Nelson County to Thomas Nelson, depending on which side of 31E right. you live on. So in my eyes, we stop that with the community campus models. That no longer happens. We there's a each there's feeder. a there's a feeder pattern. You have the east side feeding into Nelson County High School. You have west side feeding into Thomas Nelson High School. Mm -hmm. uh, to me, we would build a bigger, stronger school community, which in the long run would build a bigger, better Nelson County. Right. <clears throat> I, I agree with that. Uh, well, my kids uh, went to Cox's Creek and then went to Bloomfield Middle. And then it's kind of surprising when you realize that the uh, student population at Bloomfield Middle, uh, the majority of those students don't live near the school. Correct. You know, they're bus there. They live as far away as uh, Corman's Crossing. Uh, yes. And uh, so, uh, you know, and I, I think, uh, and there were equity issues, even when my kids were in school, because mm -hmm. they had an art teacher one year. Well, the next year, the uh, the formula, the fun school funding, wasn't going to allow them to keep the art teacher. And unfortunately, he was also certified in special ed. So they kept him, and he was able to still do some art classes. But uh, had it not been for that, they would have lost art. And there were, there were even threats against... Uh, me, their music program at the time, their mm -hmm. band uh, that my son participated in. Uh, and that, again, it comes down to money and size. Right. You know, uh, the bigger school can, uh, can has the ability to offer more diversity and uh, programs. Yeah, mm -hmm. and, and that's happening right now at Bloomfield. When my daughter <coughs> started sixth grade at Bloomfield, the enrollment was about 365. Mm -hmm. Today it's about 305. So even in the past few years, we have seen a significant drop mm -hmm. in the enrollment at Bloomfield, and that happened. They mm -hmm. lost an enrichment position. That's no longer one of the most favorite classes over there isn't mm -hmm. offered anymore because they lost that position. Um, so again, I don't know what the percentage was of Cox's Creek kids now, but back then it was about 65% or mm -hmm. bust in to Bloomfield. Right, right, and I think that uh, I think the projections are for the. Um, uh, to a, for a continued decline in the number of students at uh, Cox's Creek Middle. is only going to continue to grow. Um, mm -hmm. I actually went to where they're wanting to the transportation department um, put on a forum talking about what they want to do with 245, and they anticipate the growth out there to be I think I think don't quote me 1.9 percent every year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and wow. Cox's Creek being the only area, other than the city of Barstown, showing a steady increase in school-aged children mm -hmm. in the last 15 years. Um, the district facility plan, would it was 
so well thought out and planned that it looked 30 years into the future mm -hmm. where we wouldn't have to build schools 30 mm -hmm. years from now and it would anticipate yes. that growth right uh, one thing I look at I work in Hardin County um, and we have the largest battery plant in the nation being built there mm -hmm. and Hardin County alone can expect 4,000 new wow. students in their wow. district yeah. by the time that's up and running. Nelson County is going to feel that. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. we're we only to 25 prepare. miles away. We have to prepare for that. And there are, and Hardin County is already preparing for that. Right. They're thinking ahead. <laughs> we are going to need two high schools. We are going to need two mm -hmm. middle schools. We, and that's, that's been my biggest frustration with all of this is you have to be able to look at what's happening now and into the future and we can't just make <clears throat> decisions based on current numbers right now. We right. have that's why we have LPC process, that's why KDE has a district facility plan process so that all of those things are addressed mm -hmm. when we build schools and have those plans. Right. Right. The um uh, and that's that's why you that's one of the jobs that you hire a superintendent for. Correct. Is to yes. be able to uh, assess the needs of the school district 30, 10, 20 years down the line, at least at mm -hmm. the very least 10 years ahead or more yes. of what what the capacity of the school system is and how to adapt to it and and uh, that sounds like what was happening with the with the plans that were put forward and approved by the local planning committee. Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, I, th I think, you know, I didn't, you know, I've heard for years about the work, so the work of local planning committee, et cetera. But until I went to those meetings, uh, was it 2022 or 21, uh, I never realized how in-depth uh, they go and they have architects and engineers examine one of the one of the most important parts is they examine the existing buildings mm -hmm. yes. you know to see what their capacity is and see what those needs are uh, for example I know that uh, and every every building was very meticulously evaluated mm -hmm. uh, and I think uh, uh, and, and that's all part of the process and uh, you know this is a it's a really complicated process and, and to go a lot of different inputs you know you even have uh, the planning and zoning uh, looking at population, uh, anticipated population growth in the county. Where is it going to happen? You know, where it happens is where you need to have, you know, schools closer, et cetera. Um, so the, uh, I know the board hadn't had, uh, you know, the, the um, training facilities planning yet, uh, but uh, hopefully they will because I think that's probably one of the first needs that will have to happen sooner than later uh, with, you um, uh, whoever steps in as superintendent is reforming that and, um, uh, and but you know the interesting thing about that is, is is that it doesn't look to me like a process that can be directed from outside it kind of has its own, goes its own course you know and the members of the LPC are independent you know they're not they're not there with an agenda from somebody else you know and uh, but they you know, the, the, the LPC I saw work, they did an incredible job of sifting through everything and actually looking at what the best result would, would become mm -hmm. from the efficient use of money and resources mm -hmm. and improving education for everyone, especially on the middle school level. Yeah. Opportunity for, you know, I don't know, sports, for, for education, for enrichment. Um, you know, there's there's so much more to education than just sitting in a classroom. Oh, oh, absolutely. So much more. <laughs> and yeah. as we're seeing, that's what the future is going to demand. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And I think just to talk more about the LPC process, that's in place because those are the professionals that we need to be listening to mm -hmm. that know what education is going to look like. Right. Um, I would never go into a doctor's office and say, this is how you need to be a doctor, because I'm not a doctor. Um, so board members should not be dictating um, how educators should be teaching, because they're not the experts. Mm -hmm. Our teachers are the experts. Right, and I will tell you that, uh, and this is, this is just an aside, another editorial comment. <laughs> um, uh, you know, with... Uh, all the, with the action, the board voted on uh, the resolution regarding uh, superintendent's contract. Uh, Wes uh, 
as is always has done is turn the focus on education and the kids in the district you know he's just said i don't want this to be a, a distraction from all the great Mm -hmm. uh, education all the great work that's going on and that's just that's just Wes yeah. you know he wasn't making that up I mean mm -hmm. and well uh, he he is he has said that we've had him yeah. on a numerous times to talk about the plans of the school district and what's mm -hmm. going on it has always been positive even when a lot of nasty stuff was going on mm -hmm. uh, uh, and people making negative comments uh, mm -hmm about their own particular acts they wanted to grind yes. Uh, yes but he has been very forthright in talking about wanting to do what's best for the he wants what's best for the children of the school district mm -hmm. yes and i think it's um if as we wait for the the commissioner um nelson county will if she if this moves forward um nelson county will suffer a, a huge loss to our education system mm -hmm. and um and that's another reason that nc forward was created you know if if this happens there's going to be a huge mess to clean up and some accountability is um going to have to happen one of my friends texted me and said after the night of the uh, or the day of the meet of the meeting where they voted to uh uh, oust the superintendent. He said the city schools are going to have to build more schools. <laughs> yeah. 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 To okay. handle the influx of students. So. Well, I just want to editorialize about the bill that's up in Frankfurt, where, which would uh, make school board members have school board members run according to their political party. So I just want this is a cautionary tale. When people run with an agenda, that's all they think about, and that's right. what they yes. will do rather than go running for the good of the children. So I hope I hope that particular bill is squashed. I, I have said time and time again, um, political agendas do not. Um, deserve a spot anywhere near the decision making for our well, and that's mm -hmm. what has happened in this. It's exactly yes. right. Yes. right. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and I think um, when Damon Jackie, after he resigned from the board, when he was on Bradford and Brooks, I mean, he looking for who would replace him, and he said, just watch to see what their focus is on. Are they mm -hmm. focused on education and and our and the kids in the district, or are they coming in with an agenda? And I think we and that's exactly what we saw happened. how that worked yeah, out. That. Yes. All right. Well, I don't mean to trash the the board. I, I've been unhappy with them, but you know that's. Yeah. I just hope that they can um, start talking to everyone in the community. Mm -hmm. um, let's let's find a way to move forward. Um, but again, it, it's going to require that open dialogue and transparency mm -hmm. and. Um, political agendas are not a part of that um, we need to do what's best for kids right and I, th I think that th this is will off offer an opportunity for the for the board to change the uh, I don't know the rhetoric the uh, it's kind of a reset you know there's an opportunity here to uh, kind of change the to bring the tone down from from uh, uh, how toxic Mm -hmm. It's been into a community dialogue instead of um, one-way communication. Yes. Yeah. All right. Well, we're just about out of time. Thank you both for coming Thank in. Thank you for having Thank us. Thank you. All right. We'll see you next week with another Bradford and Brooks. Have a great week.